Ladies, gentlemen, and a reason of all ages for a game so deeply entrenched in creating a realistic and immersive experience, sometimes it almost feels like it hits a little bit too close to home. Specifically what I mean is in this game, as in life, most inconveniences can be solved with a bit of gold if you have it. Want better weapons or armor? Chances are high that you can get better things easily at a weapon or armor vendor that you can access within just a couple of minutes of travel. And the only real limiting factor for what you buy is just how much gold you are able and willing to spend. And while there are in fact absolutely comparatively ridiculous gold farming options later on in the game for sure as the vast majority of players are still very early on in their journey we're going to go over the best ways to get gold in the early section of dragon's dogma 2 including some actually farmable locations and routes but also just some particularly high value singular locations which you can only loot at one time but that one time loot is so worth getting especially from a gold front that it makes it worth specifically seeking out all that said let's start with a little tip that will apply to a lot of gold farms within this game and it is actually possible based. When you are at a rift stone, you can search for unique pawns and specifically find pawns that are created by Capcom, official pawns. This is useful because Capcom has purposely put pawns with useful specializations at different points of availability where no player pawn would actually have the same options. So you can use these search functions to reach that yourself and find a hawker specialization pawn by searching for it. These are pawns that you can actively actually sell things to, like merchants, sort of. Specifically what they do is take any sellable loot out of your inventory when you go for a rest and give you fair trade gold for it in return, which can be especially useful as this lets you do a more purposeful material to gold farm than you otherwise could do because you no longer have to worry about weight limit quite as much, which is the main thing normally stopping this kind of activity in this kind of game. Combine this pawn setup then with a useful specific location in the kingdom of Vermond to the west of Vernworth itself along the path of the ox cart towards the checkpoint town. There's this whole mountainscape along the road right here, this whole range. There are three or four different caves along this ridge line that all count is different mines, and this is important because mines are particularly overfilled with ore nodes, and you can mine these for a random chance at copper, silver, or gold ore, and you can get one to three ore per node as well, depending on further RNG. The specific cave up here at the northern side of the ridge, right by the road, has a particularly larger number of ore nodes for a very small space to actually explore to get them, and it also has a campfire directly outside, which you can use if you don't currently have any time to quest to just rest on repeat, passing multiple days of time in a row and allowing the ore nodes to actually respawn if you do that in the nearby mine. On top of that, even if you don't have a hawker pawn, this specific mine seems to, for whatever reason, have a quote unquote wandering merchant who is locked to the main road right outside, just 20 feet from the campsite. This creates a near natural gold farm where you loot the mine, sell the ore, sleep at the fire for a few nights so that everything responds and repeat this as much as you honestly care to do so. Past this, there are important and useful ways to make a lot of gold relatively quickly within this game, though they are less farmable and more limited. The first of which is actually a collection of valuable items. Jasper, if you read the description, says it is a scarcely seen item in Batal. There's also Onyx, which is labeled as scarcely seen in Fairmond. Then there is also Tiger's Eye, which is labeled as scarcely seen in Elven Lands. There are specific reasons for all of the descriptions to say what they do, because they are all in the valuables category and their intention is entirely just to be sold to merchants. They have no other purpose. But if you don't read the descriptions, you may miss the fact that you will get far, far more money for these, depending on where you actually sell them. Generally, these are worth 900 gold if you don't sell them in the right location, but if you bring them to the place that is specified as them being rare in the description, then it will triple in value, worth 2700 each, making each of these items very important to actually keep track of as you pick them up, and of course important to make sure that you sell them in the right place for full value. Now that we've covered how good these stones are, let's talk about a couple of places that you can get an absolute just sort of load of them. The first of which is the Nameless Village, all the way on the eastern side of Vermont itself. This village will pop up as part of a main story quest, it will happen, it's not necessarily required do you for completion to actually progress the quest, but it is pointed out to you as a part of it. The path to actually get here actually requires a bit of exploration. You can't just follow a road like both places, and I don't really want to ruin how you do it because it's quite interesting. And once you arrive here, there is a bit of a mystery to solve as well that I also don't want to give too much away on right here, but suffice it to say, by the time this village's story is revealed to you completely, you end up in this room right down here that just has a massive number of chests in it. And these are just multiple pieces of different equipment, a pile of gold, then also also some sellable stones too, just to really sweeten the pot. Then finally we have one more location of specific goodies. This one is a bit less valuable depending on how you look at it, but right here in front of the inn in Burnworth, you can go up to the second floor and out a door to a balcony with a ladder on it, then do some light parkour to the roof of the pond guild and on the roof there, there are three full on chests waiting to be opened with some pants, a sword, and a bit extra too in the third chest. If you want to actually use those pants or that sword, then of course this has more value to you than pure gold itself, but both of these items are buyable 
later on in the game, so if you have no interest in them right now, you can use them for an early infusion of gold in your playthrough by just selling them, and they sell for multiple tabs of gold, which is actually pretty good this early on, and simple as that. Then the final tip that I have for gold is essentially just sell off a lot of your monster materials. Honestly, there are loads and loads of different kinds of monster materials in the game, and a large majority of them say that they are for crafting and improving your equipment. And while this is technically true, the actual specificness of which weapon or armor requires which part at which rank is insane. You won't need the vast majority of these, honestly, and what you will actually need for the gear that you like is a much smaller pool than what the full grouping of these things is. So to put it simply, the best practice with monster parts in this game, honestly, is to sell them, especially early game, but only really the low to mid rarity ones. You don't want to sell materials for something that is a really tough fight for you to find or actually complete. So honestly, Cyclops stuff is really easy to decide to sell because you can always get more of it quite easily. They are everywhere and they aren't hard to kill. Same with ogres too. And at least they slip it further into the game. Griffin parts are going to be just the same. Goblin parts and saurian parts are great examples of smaller monster parts as well that you can sell quite easily. Things like that, that you may need for upgrading on occasion, sure, but they are just so common to actually find in the world while doing traveling that isn't really optional at all, that it just isn't hard to grab some when the time actually comes to do so. Instead, you are much better trading in their parts for gold in the meantime to make yourself stronger right now in the earlier sections of the game, rather than worrying about saving 15 minutes of your time 10 hours from now, because instead you can make that actually be nine hours from now when you have to go and kill stuff a little bit sooner, but you have to kill a bit more because you sold the stuff now, you made the money now, and you made your stuff better right now. And that pretty much just about does it then everyone, just a relatively early game guide on gold farming for Dragon's Dogma 2, a specific place for smaller amounts of it, a route for larger amounts if you want to actually devote some time to it and you want to do it in a sort of infinite way, some general practices to help keep your pockets as full as possible so that it's just that you can take full advantage of every vendor around the world, whether they be equipment for your weapons or your armor, or even just things like alchemy vendors where you can actually get a bunch of different types of healing that'll just make your journey easier as a whole if you have the gold to get the stock. Then just a couple of higher value individual places that you can unfortunately only loot one time as they are entirely based around chests rather than actual spawnable objects. There are of course further spots and farms for this type of stuff rather and actually later in the game. And we will of course be going over those in the coming days, at least if you want more of this type of thing. So let me know. But this is the important early stuff to help get the ball rolling up the hill. And hopefully this helps you out in your journey. Hopefully this helps you out make it a ton of gold and makes it easier to just survive in the game. Because again, the game can be quite hard, but it's also really only as hard as you make it. If you want to put actual time into gathering materials like this, gathering gold, so that you can just increase the quality of all of your gear all around very easily, then it makes the game so much simpler all around. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye